Hello and welcome to Lecture 2 of Electric Fields in Phys 1204. In this lecture we're going to understand more about electric fields by learning to draw diagrams of them. Diagrams are extremely useful for visualizing fields and especially for visualizing vector fields. For example, in this wind map you can see the gyres in the wind and the region where the wind is strong and to the east in what's called the Roaring Forties. These features just jump out of the diagram at you. But you can't have a vector at every location on the diagram. That would make, in the case of this map, the whole map black, which wouldn't be useful. So you have to draw a representative set of vectors. And for each vector you draw, it represents the value of the field at the location of the tail of the vector. Let me show you what I mean in more detail. If we zoom in on this small region and think about this vector, then what I mean is that this vector is representing the speed and the direction of the wind at this point where this orange X is, not at other points along the vector. If we wanted to represent the wind at those points, we would have to draw more vectors, which would be awkward because now the vectors would overlap. Although you can see that it's often unavoidable that vectors end up overlapping on your vector field diagrams. So here is a field vector diagram showing the field due to a positive charge. We know that the field points away from the charge at every point, and we know that it gets weaker as you move away from the charge. And of course not every possible vector is shown. I could add more vectors onto it like so. But the other thing is that this has several limitations. This is a conceptual picture. In fact, I can get Maple to draw one of these diagrams for me, and it will look like this. And notice how only the vectors very close to where the charge is at the middle are visible. Everywhere else they've just become dots. And that's because they fall off in size as 1 over r squared. And that's a very fast fall off. And so out here they all just look like dots. This diagram is more correct, but this one is more useful conceptually. Another limitation of field vector diagrams is that they're in two dimensions, where in fact this field is three-dimensional. Here is the field due to a negative charge. You know that wherever you put a positive test charge near it, it would be attracted to the negative charge, and so the field points inward. Let's see how to draw the vector diagram for an electric field due to more than one source charge. So here are two charges which we are thinking of as producing a field in this region. And we're going to start off by thinking using a probe charge. But we're very quickly going to move away from thinking using a probe charge because we know how the fields due to each of these must behave. So here is a probe charge, QP. And there will be two forces on it here. There will be an electrical force due to the positive charge, which will point directly away from the positive charge, like so. And there will be an electrical force due to the negative charge, which will point towards the negative charge. And note that our probe charge is much farther from the negative charge, and so that'll be a much smaller force. And so there will be a total electrical force on this probe charge, which is just the vector sum of those two individual forces. Now if we simply divide that total electrical force by the charge on the probe charge, we get the electric field at that point. Notice that we would have come to the same conclusion if we had reasoned that at this point there is an electrical field due to the positive charge which points straight away from the positive charge, like so. And there would be an electric field due to the negative charge which points directly towards the negative charge and is much weaker. And the total electric field is just the vector sum of those two. So that is a general rule that will always be true that the 
electric field at a location is the vector sum of the fields due to all source charges. So now we can proceed thinking in that way to draw the full vector field. So we already know at this point that there is a field vector that points this way. We could similarly at this point reason that there will be a field due to the positive charge which points like so and a field due to the negative charge which points like so and so the total field would be the vector sum of those which would be something like this. Similarly if we look at say this point there would be a field due to the positive charge which points straight away from the positive charge but would be very weak here and a field due to the negative charge which points straight in towards the negative charge and so the total would be something like this. I can have maple do up this field diagram again because these field vectors actually drop off in strength very quickly as we move away from the charges. This field diagram is not very good to look at, but this is a more accurate representation. I can have Maple rescale all the vectors in a way that makes them more visible, and then it looks like this, and you can now compare that with what I have drawn as a partial representation and see that it has the same sort of shape as what I was coming up with. This idea of the vector sum of the individual fields giving the total field at a point is very important, and so before going on I want to check that you understand it. So here is a diagram that shows a simplified model of a water molecule, and I've been using blue for negative and red for positive for some time, so the diagram is telling you that the hydrogen atoms are positive and the oxygen atom is negative. And so I want you to come up with the direction of the electric field at the point that's marked with the X.